Hey, this is Kyle from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we are going to improve our View Controller Lifecycle Observers by increasing the test confidence with integration tests and answer some questions we've received. So let's go! So the first question was, why are you adding the view controller lifecycle observers view as a subview. So I thought this was a great question. Thanks for asking it. And here it is. We are indeed adding the lifecycle observers view as a subview. And I know this looks a bit weird, but the answer is very simple. So in the UI view controller documentation, there is a section about implementing a container view controller. And right here, they state that to allow iOS to properly route the events to the child, we need to perform those steps. So back to the question, he mentions that he downloaded the code, commented out some parts, and commented out the tests, and everything else passes. Well, and that's true. So what does this teach us about the tests? So the tests we implemented in the previous video, they were somehow unit tests, but I prefer to call them contract tests. They test that we are using the API or the contract correctly, just as Apple engineers designed it to be used. So if we comment out those tests, sure, they will pass, but you might have bugs in the app because that's not how the API was intended to be used. And contract tests are very specific. Just like in this case, we know how this API should be used because we have documentation. And you can read more about this but to make sure that this code works, let's write a sample application and test the API. So back to the code. In this project, we have only a framework, so I cannot run this on a simulator. So let me create a new target. Let's select single view application and let's call it view controller lifecycle observers sample app. Okay, so now we have a new target here and a new folder with our sample application. I don't need a storyboard or a view controller, so I'm gonna remove those files. In my target general settings, let me remove the main interface because we don't have the storyboard anymore. And let's have a look at the app delegate. Okay, let's try to import our view controller lifecycle observers framework. As you can see, we don't have access to the framework. So let's go back to our target general and let's add our framework. Let's try to build again. Great, everything looks good. Back to the app delegate. So let's try to use this API now. Let's create a view controller. And let's use our observers. Let's just print the same for view did appear. View will disappear. And finally, view did disappear. Okay, to make sure we don't have any return cycles here that can affect the result, let's wikify view. And one way we can test the view controller life cycle is to just create a navigation controller, push a view controller, and then remove it from the stack. And let's create a navigation controller. Let's also create our window and set our navigation controller as the root and show it on the screen. Now, what should happen for the view to appear on screen? First thing is that after we set up the callbacks, we need to trigger the view will appear. And one way is to push it in the navigation stack. So let's push the view controller, animate it, yes. And as soon as we finish the appear transitions, we can reset the stack by sending an empty array of view controllers. And we can say animated, true. So the push view controller should trigger the will appear and did appear. And then when we clear the stack, it should call will disappear and did disappear. Let's run the application. And there it is. And I got the wrong message because there was a copy and paste mistake. Let me run this again. Here it is. View will appear, view did appear, view will disappear, and view did disappear. So this is a proof that the callbacks work. Now let's see what happens if we remove the line of code where we add the observer's view to the view hierarchy. Okay, this is commented out now. I'm gonna run the app again. 
okay? And as you can see, none of the callbacks were called. So it is mandatory to add the view to the hierarchy because that's how the API works. So let me undo this, go back to the app delegate. And as you can see, now with this code, we have a proof that it actually works in integration with UIKit. And we can automate this check process. Instead of having these print statements, we can actually create an integration test very similar to this code that will tell us if our code works, which links to the question number two. Could you make a video on writing UI tests, especially isolated tests and how to write good tests for them? So I'm gonna show today how to create integration tests that are not actually UI tests. They are much faster. They look like unit tests, but they are integrating all the components together and proving that the framework works with UIKit. And to do so, let's copy the code we have here, because this is the proof we want, but we want to automate it. Okay, let's jump to our tests. As you can see, I have implemented tests for all callbacks, but we don't have integration tests. So let's create our first one. So tests, observers, working with navigation controller transitions. Paste the code. Let's make some change now. First of all, we need to have a local variable for the window, and this is not optional as it was in the app delegate. And instead of printing, we need another mechanism to make sure that we got to the final nested callback. So let's create an expectation, wait for lifecycle callbacks. Okay, we can remove the printing. It doesn't make more sense in this case, but we wanted to fulfill the expectation when the last callback is called and we want to wait for the expectation. Let's give it a timeout of one second, but it should finish much faster than that. Let's switch to our framework target where the tests are and let's run. And we have a, an exception in the window make key invisible. And this happens because the framework tests are running not inside an application. They are running as a framework. Let's have a look at our test target. As you can see, there is no host application. There's a couple of things we can do. We can create a separate test target with a host application, for example, the sample app, then you can add windows to the hierarchy, or you can use the same framework test target, but give it a host application, for example, the sample app. Now, if we run the tests, no exception anymore. And actually the tests also pass, which is great, but I want to see this test failing. Otherwise I don't trust this test. So we can go back to the code, comment out the line where we add the view to the hierarchy, can go back, run the test and it fails. So there you go. Now we have integration tests. So let me go back and comment the line, run all the tests again. And it's passing. Okay. So again, we can have this test in a separate target or we can keep it here since it's a framework self-contained. It's okay. But if you have a large application, it's nice to separate them. And some people ask me, why would you have contract tests if you can have just one integration test? Well, the problem with that is that if these tests fail somehow, I have no idea why. The integration test doesn't point me exactly where the problem is. And that's where the contract tests shine. And that's why we need both. We need a contract test. So if there are failures, we know exactly what it is. I don't need to debug. It's a valuable test. It's fast. It's reliable and it tells me exactly where the problem is. So the contract tests don't actually guarantee that the callbacks are being fired in the real working application. Integration tests make sure that our implementation actually works. For example, in the context of a navigation controller, all the callbacks will be fired correctly. And since this is a framework, I don't need to have UI tests here. I would only write UI tests if extremely necessary in a very complex application where I'm testing like whole flows end to end. So this is enough to prove that our code works in isolation. We respect the contract. And when we integrate this with UIKit, it also works. Again, thanks for the questions. Keep them coming. They help us understand how we can help you better. Don't forget to check the description. We always add links where you can learn more about what we are talking about. We hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe. And I see you next time. Mm -hmm.